everybody out there on the World Wide Web. And stay tuned for this edition of The Last Game Hunter. And today, we are going to show the 8 bit USB flash drive looking thing that can possibly make this thing work better. Now in this episode, basically this little device boasts, not only does it give you wireless gamepad support, that's right, so you're looking at about I think $25 Canadian, I'll put a link down below from Amazon, and, and I'm guessing about $20 US. This guy, one, will give you the possibility of using your PS4 controllers for example. Now you have wireless gamepads on this thing, whereas no one else has supported it 8 bit is here to save the day. Now, what else can it do? Apparently, and I haven't tried this yet because I haven't even opened it, it can uh, access the hidden menu on this unit and allow you to change the hertz. Now, what the biggest problem with this unit was is the fact that it's not playing at the proper speeds that it should be playing at. And the reason for that is these things were shipped Almost like they thought, hey, North America's the United Kingdom, let's play it in their frequencies. This unit is running wrong because it's running at 50 hertz. Why would you do that? Well, who knows? I don't think they put a lot of time, thought, and effort into this other than the case looks really cool. It's running an emulator that is simply put out on a PC. Now, in the hidden menu, apparently you can change it to 60 hertz. You can even change it to be faster. Let's try it out. Hey, I just realized something. I don't think there's any instructions. One minute. Okay, so apparently you're not going to believe this, but the instructions are stickered to the back of the unit. Yeah, tells you how to pair your PS4 controller, uh, looks like the switch dock, and I guess how to access that menu. So now i got to take this sticker off without damaging it and put it somewhere so I can remember what the beep to do. I beeped myself. Okay, so just so I know where it is, just in case I forget, because I forget a lot, I stuck it to the back of the bottom of the PlayStation Mini, and be careful not to co cover up any of the holes, because who knows this thing might die on you if you do that, because it still needs to breathe. Okay, so now, like a USB thumb drive, as I said, I believe you're to put it, well I guess it doesn't matter, if you want to have uh, joystick support or whatever, doesn't matter, you can put it in joystick port 1 or joystick port 2 if you want player 2 to be the wireless or whatever. And you can also get two of these and actually have two wireless game pads. That right there is a good reason to buy this for 20 bucks if you actually enjoy playing this. Okay guys, so what we're going to do now is we're going to pair the PlayStation 4 controller to the PlayStation Mini. And to do that, you got to put your controller in pairing mode and the 8-bit O adapter in pairing mode. To do that, here's a little button that's gonna be on the USB key that's right on the front of it, and you just push that button, and it'll blink fast, and then it'll be in pairing mode. There we go. Okay, so to do the PlayStation 4 pairing mode, you press the share and the PlayStation home button at the same time, and wait for it to flash, and it'll do like a quick flash, and then it will uh, basically vibrate, light will go solid, you're connected. So, cannot recognize the controller. Reconnect the controller to the port. Oh, that's wonderful. Okay, so welcome back. I'm sorry, it is actually another day. You can see I'm wearing a different shirt. Uh, my hair could be a little different. It's not my normal poof or what it was not last night either. And 
The delay was the other controller I'm having trouble with and this system. So I'm going to see if this works. And if this works, then I got something going on with that controller. And that's fine. It was a pickup. It, it did advertise that it had a couple issues, but connecting wasn't supposed to be one of them. So while your PlayStation Mini is off, you press and hold the button at the very end of it on that 8-bit uh, O device, and it's going to flash really fast. Then you take your PlayStation and your share button, you press them until your light flashes and we are now connected. So what was happening with the other controller was it looked like it would power up and then I'd be able to move it once and then power down and it looks like I'm having the exact same problem here and here we go again. Interesting problem. Now according to everything this is supposed to connect with the 8-bit O device with no issues. I've got two PlayStation 4 controllers now, and I know this one, 100%, is fully functional. I thought the other one was defective because it would connect, and I'd be able to use it once to move the menu, as you just seen, and the same thing is happening with this one. So, I have another problem. Okay, guys, welcome back. Um, it's been a little while because I was making this video, and I had a lot of problems with the 8 o USB drive and the problem was I need the firmware and it wasn't quite clear as to how it was done by the tech support by 8 Bitto at the time it was just a mistake and what they did was they basically uh, told me a file to download to do a firmware plug it into the system and it would be able to blah 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 but they didn't tell me how to make that actual program start up so the program would start up, it wouldn't recognize the unit, but they didn't tell me how to put it into um, recovery mode, basically. So basically you just have to press and hold the button while it's out of the USB, plug it into the USB and it'll be in recovery mode. It'll be detected by the software and then the firmware, the firmware, you tell it the firmware. So anyway, that's done. It's all working as you can see that I have controller support. Now you're going to see me looking up a lot and that's because I'm looking up at my projection screen as I don't have my TV in my office yet, unfortunately. <laughs> Sorry about that because it's going to look weird because it looks like I'm looking at the sky. But anyway, I'm not. So guys, basically, is this key the savior to the PlayStation Mini? Let's find out. It's definitely up to you as a user to determine whether this is a savior or not. It's, it's your, you know, choice. I'll give you my thoughts. So basically, you, you go to a game. Let's just pick Rayman. Now, we already have the coolest thing. We have wireless controller support, which nobody supported this product, as I said earlier, and Nate Quido did that for us. So let's get into the game. Okay, so as you can see, we have the game, we're running, we were jumping. And honestly, in this game, it's really hard to tell about the difference, but it is running in 50 hertz. That is a mistake. So to access the hidden menu, you have to be in the game. You press the left and right bumpers and press the options key on the PS4 controller, which would be start. Oops. Now you're going to have this menu. You want to let it go down to PC SX menu. And here's our menu. We're going to go to options. In options, we're going to go down to region. See it's on auto. Auto seems to default to PAL. So we're going to put it to NTSC. Now you hit the back. Go back to resume game and you're now playing at 60 Hertz. Oops. And for some weird reason I guess 60 Hertz is just a dumb idea for me because I couldn't play. Actually the game does run a little smoother probably won't notice it whatsoever unless you're really playing it. But, so, now we're running it in NTSC 60 hertz mode, so the game is running, and, and here's the downside. Every single game that you start up, you need to go into the menu and adjust that feature. If you turn the system off and go back to play the same game or any other game, exact same thing. You need to go in, 
and adjust the feature. Now, for $20, you get wireless gamepad support, which is amazing. And you get the option to access the hidden menu and fix the frequency or the hertz or whatever you wish to call it, the region of your game. And enjoy the system the way it was meant to be. So is it a savior for the PlayStation Mini? In my case, I will enjoy it this way, and in my next video I will add games to it and make the unit much more enjoyable with the games that I enjoy. Saying that, this wireless game support and being able to change the hidden menu is going to be a complete blessing for me. So I'm saying, not necessarily a savior, because Sony's already screwed that up, that path has been flattened, someone has cut the path, and there's no crossing that border anymore. But guys, it works, it's $20, I'll link the uh, where to buy in Amazon down below, and hey, okay, it gives you wireless game support, and that is the best thing that this thing can do at that point anyway. So guys, till next time, please like, share, subscribe, 